Hello, it's got some missing space in there. Um, today's been a very busy day in terms of personal messages um, for information and help and you know ideas and tips and tricks and all the rest of it. Um, what I want to do is cover as much as I can for everybody who have um, asked me some advice. Um, I one of them was for the contact for the ceramic belts that I would use for my little 1x30. So what I'll do is I'll put Tyler Hardware's phone number in the description box underneath. Okay, I think it was Z Rocco. I think it was that was after the, the basically the phone number in order to get myself some ceramic belts. It would also help Nick later on November Kilo. Um, one question I had was from Celtic and St. Pauli. Uh, what he was after was some common man um, ideas on preps and knives and tools and equipment. Um, I would say if, if you can catch the Dave Canterbury 10 C's, it would be to include them somewhere in your kit. Um, don't go out of your way to go to sites that sell cheap ass stainless knives of which look like this okay impressive to look at but there's just nothing to it physically metallurgy well it's just a complete it's a war hanging okay get yourself a decent knife i was talking if you get a mora that'll do a folding saw that'll do that's in terms of what the Bushcrafty, survivally, you know, kit would cover. When it comes to prepping, there's more to it than that. So if you're going to do prepping, I'm only a real basic guy, but it's the funky preppers uh, and the people in America who know what they're on about and what they don't know is, is the way that they store food. My way is just simple. Don't prep what you're not going to eat. Okay, if you can take simple stuff, tin tuna, peanut butter, vegetable oil makes a massive difference because you can fry it instead of boil everything, and just literally store the stuff that you know you're going to, you already are using. Okay, I mean, it's one of the things that when I was doing the UK preppers, so much stuff was left out. Uh, these little nuggets of information just because some chap in America has got racks and racks and racks of beans it may not be to your taste but you know food fatigue is a pretty damn grim thing so if you had six months where the winter set in and you're stuck in some crofter's cottage in the middle of the Brecon Beacons and there's no way anybody can get to you unless you decide to do an airlift if you've got food that you can take that you may not need necessarily heat in and you're going to eat it because you like it that's the sort of preps you need to consider and think about the army ration packs are very useful um, because you can actually boil them in the bag you don't necessarily need clean water to cook them in and add to you can boil it in the bag and heat it through you can use scummy water as long as you keep the top clean at the top when you cut it and empty it out. If you could do your water purification um, with the little tabs, one thing I've I, I got to mention because I don't know whether people actually cover it, is when you use whatever vessel you're going to use, be it a one litre Osprey bottle, be it a, a milk jug or any, when you let it settle and done it, and you've used it a few times go out your way to wash it out because I've heard that their accumulation of the chlorine in the top can actually build up so we have to purge it every now and again because the chlorine chemicals in, in the thing just gets left behind at the top of the bowl boiling water is very useful so if you can get yourself and invest in uh, a one litre stainless steel single skin canteen. Now, uh, Stanley do one, uh, Highlander do one. Sometimes you can get the Stanley one from TK Maxx uh, for about six pounds. But you can get them on Amazon. They're one litre and, and they're basically thermos flask size, 
thermos less capacity, but it's a one skin vessel, it's stainless steel with a big wide neck on it. If you've got a prep in very minimalist looking way, you can use that bottle as your go bag. You put your knife in there, you put your rolled up um, garbage bag, now we're talking, not, not bin liner, we're talking, okay, wheelie bin liner. You can put your bank line, because it's better than a power cord. You can put your folding knife, you can put your uh, water purification tabs, you can put a, you know, a block of Kendall Me and Cake or something in it. You can put, have a lot of gear in that thing. Do not lid up tight, stick it in the car. Okay? Um, in terms of folding knife, Sword Peasant's quite useful. If you've got a little bit of money, get yourself a decent Leverman or a Gerber. I'm not going to say you've got to get a Leverman. A good Leverman, a good Gerber, a good Swiss tool will do the job, but get one with a sword. Okay? Because there's no point having something that's a half hearted effort of a folding knife, a half hearted effort of a pair of pliers, a half hearted effort of this and that if it hasn't got a saw, you might as well have a saw in a decent Leverman size multi-tool package. When it comes to clothing, spend that on a really good coat, a really good outer shell that's at least one size too big so you can layer up like Michelin Man. It may not be your clothes you might end up wearing, it could be somebody who's bigger than you, but you can still put your coat on top of it. Okay, a Shema is good, small neat and uh, tired hats it's just doesn't matter how knackered they are it will still keep your head warm um, but just just try and keep it manageable okay financially volume wise wherever you're going to store it um, if you're going to store it in crates make sure the crates aren't the most brittle things you can find you know they might if they can take a drop okay if you don't mind the weight Good old ammo boxes aren't that bad a thing to do. They're pretty bulky, but you can store and trust what's in there. So that's because the ammo box will take a drop, okay? And um, just try and enjoy it. Don't look at it as a chore if you can help it. Because the actual mentality approach of it, it would be less of a barrier, feeling you have to do it if you're in if you can get in the mentality of enjoying it and immersing yourself in it in such a way that you're happier mentally, physically doing it it'll, it'll come more naturally to you so when you start looking at items in the supermarket your psyche, your approach, your mentality will change Okay, uh, you look at things slightly differently how much it would cost you to make if you tried to make it how much aggro it would be if you had to try and reproduce it Okay, so you suddenly look at Brasso cleaner and you think, oh, hang on, man, that's a pretty damn useful fire starter. It, when someone introduces it to you and you get a different light on how you see items in hardware store, in a pet store, th things take on different uses when you look at them in a different way. It's exactly the same that indigenous people, they don't really interested in what the tree's flowers might look. They're after the characteristics of the seeds. Because seem can light a fire with that. It's looking at the actual tangible capabilities and the characteristics of what you're looking at. That is what you're trying to use. Okay, so peanut butter. 96% peanut. The bloody thing stays in the jar for two years. That's a good prep. Some pat at two pound, or Tesco value at 57p or 60p. Nutritionally, there isn't much in it. It's that approach. What does what for you for how much investment in time and money? So if you can get almost as much done, almost as much achieved for a quarter cost, you got more time, more money to invest and put into the normal things in normal lives you don't stand out like a completely loony because people will look at you because you approach things in a different way they may not see it as a threat but you'll be surprised at the opposition sort of conversations that crop up why do you want to be buying that? why are you buying six tins of this? why are you... okay 
and without going too much and too deep into each conversation to try and justify what you're doing in the, in the supermarket queue when you're buying 12 jars of peanut butter. It's just what I'm doing. You or I'll prepare for the end of the world and you all do it too. You know, if you come out with that, it's just different ways of diffusing the situation. Um, but if if you can think about what does a tent offer you? Well, if you just put a small two-man tent in the car, and forget about it. You will be burning more petrol carrying it around. But the time that you know you're stuck in a blizzard somewhere, you've got something else in there that if you got up higher, if the car was in a complete dip like this and you, there's no way that the car can get out, it's backed up left, it's backed up front, well you could actually end up probably warmer if you went up the hill a bit, found some trees under some shelter, cleared it, put the tent up, got your stove going, you're not stuck in a steel box at the bottom in the snow drift, it might actually be a better situation depending on whether or not you've got the skills to be better off doing it. Do you understand? There's a lot of stuff that's going on. Like some people may actually know that if you stayed in the car and you had something like a little uh, heater, you could be better off staying in the car on the main road. But some people, it's d depending on your experience, it's depending on your approach, depending upon your gear, at least you've got the option to bugger this. I'm off somewhere else. Do you understand me? Or you could think, I'm staying with the crowd, I'm staying with everybody else, there's loads of us all together, there's 25 people, let's all stick in six cars and keep the heat together. There's different ways of approaching things. But if you prep, there's a different way of doing it. You've either got nothing, in which case you're in with the sheep, you're in with everybody else, you haven't got the faintest idea what to do when, or you're the guy with a few odds and sods, you've always got a shovel in the car, you've always got a wool blanket in the car, you've always got some form of heating in the car, two torches, enough gear for, you got your antifreeze, you got your screen wash, you got every, all the little bits and bobs, your spare light bulbs, your tow rope, you got your warning triangle, your reflective vest, and you're the one helping everybody else out, because you're prepared. It's not just prepping for the end of the world with food and water and air filtration and a nuclear bunker. It's it's everything else as well. And you can do, go from hardly anything up to, to full on zombie apocalypse. You've got your containers all welded together and you've got machine guns top left and bottom right and razor wire everywhere. And a full shade of grey from one end to the other. You can do it as cheap or as expensive as you want to do it. Start basic, but do it. Don't just buy the stuff. You've got to do it. You've got to walk in and become the prepper as opposed to buy your way in. Yeah? So, buy basic stuff and know how to use it. So, Keep it simple. If you need any more advice, let me know. But it's it's the approach you want, not necessarily the specific items. Stuff from Wessex Blades. Have a good night. Cheers.